7 a.m. on the West Coast and 10 a.m. on the East Coast, 3 p.m. in London, in Sydney, New South Wales, it's 12 midnight, and here in Malaysia, it's 1987. I'm Jay Sheldon, and I'm not wearing pants. Hello, Luna Amethyst 404. Hey, hey, good to see you. My goodness, it's been a while. Wow. Nice to have you along for the ride. I wore my banana shirt tonight just for you. See, you got the banana shirt on. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. It is great to have a bunch of people just coming in. Come on in. Grab a beverage, an adult uh, refreshment of some kind, if you like. And, uh, oh, you are entirely welcome for the Instagram likes, uh, Luna. I... Uh, I uh, I liked your your postings. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, we are live once again across uh, three platforms. And let me tell. I'll tell you about TikTok coming up in a minute. <laughs> Forget it. Uh, <laughs> we're live on Facebook Live, of course. I'm not wearing pants as the page. Please subscribe there and share that if you would. That really helps the numbers go up. On YouTube. Of course, uh, you can find us in not only live, but uh, all of our past episodes are also there on our live um, playlist. And uh, subscribe, please, to YouTube. I really appreciate that. Our YouTube subscriptions are up. We get 356 or something like that. We need to get it up there. So get over there. Get your friends over there to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's Saturday, a little late for me. Um, well, you can't join on weekdays. Ah, we're actually considering, we're talking about it, changing the stream time. I think I'll stick with Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. But we're actually considering, because here in Malaysia, this is a great time. 10 o'clock at night, we're settled in, the day's pretty much over, so it's a good time. But it's not always a good time for people, and we've got listeners all over the world. Our podcast, people listening to the audio are listening in on uh, from India, from the UK, the US, New Zealand, Australia. We get people all over the planet. Um, and of course, this is like, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning for people on the East Coast of the US. So that's, uh, that's a little, that's a little uh, early for some people. <laughs> so um, I should. <laughs> yeah, okay, Joey. Oh, man. Um, Anyway, we are thinking about it. We're looking at some data. We're trying to find the best place for the most amount of viewers. Uh, we're also, of course, on twitch.tv. Twitch is where you can find us also live, all those Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And Twitch is where you can find Miko merchandise like this, our cool coffee cup with Miko on the front and our logo on the back. We've got a mouse pad. We've got t-shirts. We've got hoodies. We've got all kinds of crap over there. So even little cheap stickers you can buy with the uh, Miko merchandise on twitch.tv. You find it over there. Um, we are, as we mentioned, a podcast, of course. And thank you very much for those of you listening and for those who have downloaded and subscribed to our podcast. Uh, I'm not wearing pants. It's on Every platform you can imagine, uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, Stitcher, TuneIn, Pocket Casts, uh, Radio.com, Joe Seven, and uh, all kinds of places all across the uh, all across the podcast spectrum. And we thank you very much for uh, for your subscriptions and downloads over there. The numbers are, are very good. We're doing very well. We thank you for that. And uh, I've got a special announcement coming up on our Patreon page. Something brand new we're launching right now, literally right now, on our Patreon page. So head over there to Patreon, J. Sheldon, patreon.com slash J. Sheldon. In fact, you'll see it. It's on our scroll here tonight. And, um, and check it out. But I'll be announcing what it is and explaining a little bit coming up in a minute or two, so be sure you hang around for that. It is now time for... Miko Update. <laughs> Miko Update! <laughs> uh, if you saw the thumbnail for our show tonight, there was one big William Wallace 
face screaming and above it it says freedom well kind of <laughs> the emco or whatever the hell letter they put in front of mco which is movement control order it's one of the things they do to put us all under house arrest here in this silly attempt to try and curb the spread of the virus uh um anyway we haven't been able to even go outside in the sunshine and vitamin D, all that good stuff. You know, science, never mind. Uh, and we can't even take the dog for a walk. And I've been complaining about that because, I, first of all, I think it's stupid. Second of all, because the dog needs to walk, okay? I can put up with a couple of weeks of not getting any sunshine. I can go out in the yard, but the dog needs some exercise. I'm an old fat man. I don't need exercise so much. The dog needs some exercise. This is Miko's face today. I wish I did get a video, but I didn't get time to put it up. I'll put it up in our next stream in our Miko update. I went upstairs. I put on my walking shorts and my sleeveless shirt, and I come down the stairs, and she looks up at me, and it was so human. It was like, <gasps> yes! Her ears went down into these airplane ears, and she was beside herself because she knew that Jay in his shorts means we're going for a walk. And so this morning, for the first time we were legally able to, about 8 o'clock, we took off and she put on her little uh, harness and we got the leash and out we went for a nice walk around the block. These were uh, some of the pictures when we stopped. When uh, you can just tell, you can see the happiness on this doggy's face. She is absolutely beside herself with uh, with happiness. And uh, yeah, she, she was more than a little pleased. In fact, um, let me just get to, ah, here we go. Hold on, I wanna, no, 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 stop. Okay, uh, I'll get it in a second, hold on, hold on. All right, I gotta go back to the beginning. Very short little video for you, here we go. Here she is in the park, going for a walk. We're, this is a beautiful park, by the way, here in uh, where I stay in Malaysia. There she is. Say, are you sure you want to go? There she goes. And off and away she goes down the lane. No, wait, do not flee. To, to bring back the William Wallace reference. Freedom, do not flee. <laughs> and away she goes. She really, uh, she was beside herself. She had such a great time out there in the park and uh, enjoying herself. So, um, yeah, so that's uh, that's the Miko update. It took a little longer than I expected, but there you go. Um, I got to do some readjustments here because this doesn't exactly fit. So let me see what I can do to make it fit. Um, there we go. Yes, the EMCO has been lifted in Salangor. That's the state that I live in. And uh, I just wanted to, there, there's certain restrictions that we have. We still have, we're still under a movement control order. But um, yeah, this, I, I just thought I would, um, I just thought I would share a, couple, a few of these just so the people in the other parts of the planet who don't have these rules to live by can appreciate uh, some of the things. And, I won't go into all these details, but this particular list kind of raised an eyebrow. Social activities that are not allowed. Face-to-face -face meetings. Having visitors over, except for emergencies or deliveries. Fishing, except for fishermen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can't fish unless you're a fisherman. Uh, photographic activities video shoots, filming, except for talks, live streamed individually. Hey, that sounds familiar. This one is another, another head shaker. Live or recorded broadcasts, except in the form of news, forums, or talks. Okay. Uh, busking, meetings, conventions, and exhibitions. These are things you're not allowed to do. And driving lessons, maritime training institutes, and flight lessons. So, there you go. 
just a few. Uh, believe me, this list is longer than your arm, longer than three arms and a couple of legs. So, um, yeah. That's the stuff that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Can I recommend something to you? The guys at My Burger Lab, now they're not paying for an advertisement on this show. If they want to, feel free. I'd be happy to talk to you. But the guys at My Burger Lab in Malaysia, which is this very cool, very good gourmet burger uh, outlet, small franchise, local here to Malaysia. Uh, so if you're not in Malaysia, I'm sorry, but you don't know what you're missing because it's really good. Um, they have been struggling. They have been dealing with the lockdown. They've been dealing with uh, deliveries and takeouts only, no in-store dining. Um, they made a commitment to their employees and to their customers, but moreover to their employees to keep them employed, to pay them, and to make it through this, uh, <clears throat> this pandemic and this lockdown. And I, I don't want to read the whole thing. It is a public post, so it's public on Facebook. But if you go to Facebook and type in My Burger Lab, M-Y Burger Lab, read the post they put up there. I think it was a couple days ago, uh, about 1130 in the morning. And uh, I, I was going to share it, but I did share it actually to my Facebook page. I was going to read it, but it's a bit long to read. I encourage you to go read that yourselves and check it out later on after the show, whatever, just write it down for reference. But um, uh, kudos and the tip of the hat to the amazing folks at my burger lab. Again, they didn't pay for an ad. I'm not getting free burgers out of it, but they do an amazing job in fighting for the spirit that we all need these days. And you read this and you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, the difficulty, the mountains they've had to climb, and how they've dealt with it, and how they're still dealing with it. So, support these guys. They deserve your support. They're your support, my Burger Lab. And in addition to that, their food is to die for. <laughs> oh, man. That's very good stuff. All right. Um, moving on. Uh, by the way, our big Patreon announcement is coming up. I didn't forget. It's still coming. Stand by. You'll see also on our thumbnail tonight, we mentioned Samurai Fax. That's F-A-X. Now I know, who sends fax anymore, right? Does anyone even still have a fax machine? I'm sure most of you still know what a fax is. It's not like saying, you know, a record player or a cassette. A fax machine was not so long ago, and in fact, some places actually do, even in this day and age, still use them. But I saw this, and you know what? I'm still not even sure I believe it. But I did look it up, and these dates are accurate. This is the coolest thing. This is the coolest thing. Check this. The samurai in Japan were officially abolished as a caste system in Japanese society during the Meiji Restoration which was 1867. Follow me here, okay? 1867, the samurai were abolished as a caste system in Japan. The first ever fax machine, the first, first early, early fax machine called the printing telegraph was invented in 1843, okay? Before the end of the samurai in the Meiji era. era. Abraham Lincoln, famously, of course, was, and sadly, assassinated at Ford's Theater in 1865. So, there was a 22-year window in which a samurai could have sent a fax to Abraham Lincoln. Huh? Huh? Think about it. You never thought of it that way, did you? It's absolutely true, and those dates are accurate. The first ever fax machine, it was, not, it was nothing like what we have now, wires and all, but it was in 1843, the printing telegram. Sent a telegram, and it would print it out. 
Uh, samurai were around until 1867, and Lincoln was in office and wasn't assassinated until 1865. So technically, a samurai could have sent a fax to Abraham Lincoln. Now that's weird. <laughs> I love these things. These are so cool when you think about the day, because if you just said that to somebody, you, should, you could do it as a bar bet. Hey, I'll bet you the next round that a samurai could have sent a fax to Abraham Lincoln. And they'll be like, what are you, crazy? I'll take that bet. And then there you go. You win. The next round's on you. <laughs> That's the strangest thing, I swear. Speaking of strange things, how would you like to charge this, your phone, with this, your hand? Believe it or not, scientists may have just discovered a way. Now, let me just do a little resize here. Hold on. There we go. The scientists, the headline here, this is from the Independent, independent.co.uk. I think it might be a paywall site. I'm not sure. Let me just scroll. Yeah, it is a paywall site. So sorry about that. But at least I can give you some of the top details. If you happen to be a subscriber to the Independent, you can, uh, you can read the whole article. Scientists have made the holy grail discovery, charging devices using people's bodies. They've invented the world's most efficient on-body energy harvester. It is capable of powering devices from a person's fingertips. Engineers at the University of California, San Diego, discovered that a thin, flexible strip placed on the skin could generate enough electricity from a wearer's sweat to power wearables and several other devices. As well as generating electricity from sweat, the biofuel cells, BFC, can also harvest extra power from light finger presses, from activities like typing or playing the piano. This science stuff is weird, ain't it? I'm telling you. <laughs> the, the quote from the scientist here, uh, Joseph Wang, professor of nanoengineering at uh, UC San Diego Jacobs School of Engineering. We envision this could be used in any daily activity involving touch, things that a person would normally do, anything while at work, at home, watching TV, eating, the goal is the wearable device will naturally work for you, and you don't even have to think about it. Professor Wang, other authors of a study detailing the system, described it as the holy grail of energy harvesters, as it doesn't rely on any external, irregular energy sources like sunlight or movement. You just basically put these little tabs, the little stickers on your fingers, and off you go. You can charge your phone. It happens because of the sweat. Now, in my case, I could probably power most of the parts of Southern California with just one big sticker on my body. So, <laughs> so <it's, coughs> the way I sweat in this weather, seriously, I could power half of San, San Diego. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Uh, would it be comfortable for, for sewing? <laughs> I have no idea. Did you mean sewing? Uh, maybe. I don't know. It's very weird. It doesn't say anything more. That's the end of the article. So, uh, yeah, good luck with that. Weird. <clears throat> hey, what number are you? Not what's your number, like your phone number or your social security number. Although if you want to send me your credit card number, you can feel free. Now, what number are you? I saw this website and it's, it's one of those weirdo things like samurai sending a fax to Lincoln, but it is cool. So let me, I, I can't put in all of your birth dates. I put in mine. I'll show you that in a second. But if you go to worldpopulationhistory.org, you'll find a little device there. Hey, Farid, thanks for the like and thanks for jumping in on the stream. Nice to see you. <laughs> you missed all the fun stuff, but we got more fun stuff to come, so don't go away. Um, anyway, this, this site is so cool. It is, what is your pop number? 
when you were born, where do you fit in? What number are, were you, are you, in the seven billion plus people that live on this little blue marble in space, hurling through space? Just a hundred years ago, the world's population had yet to reach two billion, less than a third of the seven billion plus people on the planet today. So where do you fit in of those seven billion people? You put your birth date into this and it figures out where in the overall scheme of things your number is according to your birth date. Check it out. This is for me. I was born in 1958. Yes, I am really that old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. I'll just drop by. Hey, thanks for reading. Thank you so much. Thanks for everything. And thanks for stopping by. Come back anytime. We're here Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, 10 o'clock for about an hour, sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little less. Um, all right. So there you go. I put my birthday date in. And let me just get my mouse back. Here we go. You can see over here, this is the, uh, the population of uh, 7 billion. And when I was born, this is my number. I was the, let's see. Hundreds, thousands, millions, billions. I was the 2,922,563,394th person alive on Earth. I know, it means absolutely nothing, but it's kind of cool to know that. And it's weird because that puts me at around 300 billion. That puts me just about in the middle of the total population of the Earth today, which is 7 billion. A little less than halfway through all the people that are alive today. How cool is that? Very, very cool. So that's my, that's my number. You can figure yours out. Again, it's World Population History. Dot org, and then there's some you'll find the links in there. It's very cool though. It just, it's like one of those absolutely useless bits of information that I thought was pretty cool and wanted to share. All right, um, we always do a little bit of um, inspirational quotes, and I found a story that somebody posted. And I, while I have no particular personal reference. This might mean a lot to some people, and so I wanted to share it. Um, when I find these, I like to share them. Some funny, some inspirational, some meaningful. Uh, this one is inspirational. It's quite nice. Listen. A good friend of mine unexpectedly lost her husband. A couple of months later, we were running together, chatting about nothing. She asked what my dinner plans were, and I told her that hubby wanted some chili, but I didn't feel like stopping at the store. We ran a few more minutes when she quietly said, make the chili. It took me a few minutes to realize we were no longer talking about dinner. It was about going out of your way to do something for someone you love, because at any moment, they could unexpectedly be taken from you. So today I'm sharing with you that wisdom handed to me by my dear friend that I've thought of many times since that day. The next time someone you love wants you to go for a walk, watch a football game, play a board game, or just put your phone down and give them your undivided attention do it. Make the chili. Make the chili. That is so important and so sweet. Nice. All right. Okay, it is just before we get into our book tonight, we're going to continue on with The Jungle Book. We've been reading The Jungle Book now for quite a few episodes. It's a long book. Um, so we're going to continue with that coming up in just a little bit. But uh, 
Uh, first, I want to start with, with this great quote. I saw this from uh, Easy Teaching Tools, which is a site that promotes reading, reading to kids and how important it is. I know a lot of my friends have got young kids and I cannot encourage you more to read to them, get them to read, teach them to read, or get them to listen to reading. Because we, we showed you in our last stream that there's been a scientific study that shows that kids reading or being read to the comprehension and the retention and the parts of the brain that get activated activated are virtually the same. There's very little, if any difference at all, between be, the, a, a child reading or you reading and being read to. So says a lot about audiobooks. The biggest single predictor of high academic achievement is reading to children. Not flashcards, not workbooks, not fancy preschools, not blinky toys or computers or phones, but mom and dad, or dad and dad and mom and mom, taking the time every day or every night or both to sit and read your kids wonderful books. And I, for one, cannot encourage you more to do that. You know that part of the reason, in fact, 99% of the reason that we decided on this show that we would end every stream by reading a chapter or two or part of a chapter of a famous classic book, uh, the, the reason that we decided to do that was because we wanted to encourage reading. We wanted you to get out there and read to your kids, rediscover reading yourself because it's important and it's pleasurable and it keeps your brain cells active. Um, so that's really the biggest reason why we started reading books on this stream. I know a live stream where I, some old fart reads books, but people seem to like it. They enjoy it. Um, and we thank you for those of you who stay with us for the books. Uh, however, one of the things that I was told by more than one person was that they would love a way to be able to just listen to the books. Well, we have added that now, and uh, we have put it over on our Patreon page as a tier. So you can join Patreon and support the show. It's just five bucks a month, like nothing cup of coffee. And uh, it goes a long way, though, to help to support the cost of running this show. I don't want to beg. I don't like to beg. So if you're there and you can afford it, you got an extra five bucks a month, just hit that tier and thank you very much. We appreciate it. However, we've added a new tier. By the way, there's an even bigger tier where I would do voice recording for you on a monthly basis, but you'll see the details if you go to our Patreon page. But our new tier that just launched today is reading the classics. And what it is, is that if you join at that tier level, and it's not terribly expensive, on our Patreon page, you will get access to all the books we have read from the very beginning when we started with the wonderful Wizard of Oz. And what we've done is we've edited them. So all you've got is the book without all the beginning and half hour of the show and all the other fluffy crap we talk about. Uh, so you just click and it's all laid out by chapters. The Wizard of Oz, chapter one, two, three, four, five, six. You can watch one or two at a time. You can watch the whole thing. You can watch a half of one and pick up where you left off. So they are all there and uh, exclusively for our Patreon uh, second tier level sponsors. Patreon.com slash J Sheldon if you'd like to head over there and um, sign up. So you'll find them there. They're all there. The, the little end of the show that we do like a 60 second wrap up at the end of the show or so is, is also part of that. But, but all the chapters, we've got the Velveteen Rabbit, uh, the Little Prince, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz, uh, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan. The only thing we don't have, and we will, we're working on it now because we haven't finished the book yet, is our current book, The Jungle Book. So as soon as we've got all the episodes of The Jungle Book done, we will also upload those. So you can also listen into The Jungle Book as we go through uh, 
through the stream. So if you if you like, please head over. Again, you can support us at any level on Patreon. Just a, a five buck sponsor, just to help support the show. We appreciate that. Or the reading the classics tier, and of course also the voiceover professional voiceover uh, tier is also there. You can check it out. Patreon.com slash J Sheldon. I will not bother you anymore except to remind you occasionally that it's there. I wanted to do a big spiel now so that you understood what, what it was that we were doing. So yeah, that's there. It's there for you. And we appreciate those of you who can uh, who can pop by and, and help us out. Cool. Cool beans. So reading the classics, it's all there on our, uh, on our Patreon page. And it's time to do exactly that. Reading the classics. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, whoops. My goodness, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why that thing likes bopping around like that, but it does. Um, so we are doing The Jungle Book. We've been doing this uh, book for quite a while now. We're about halfway through. So yeah, it is a long book. Mm. So continuing on with The Jungle Book. And uh, we were just here where Boldeo was explaining how the tiger that had carried away Masua's son was a ghost tiger, and his body was inhabited by the ghost of a wicked old moneylender who died some years ago. And I know that this is true, he said, because Purandas always limped from the blow that he got in a riot when his account books were burned. And the tiger that I speak of, he limps too, for the tracks of his pads are unequal. True, true, that must be the truth, said the greybeards, nodding together. Are all these tales such cobwebs and moon talk? said Mowgli. That tiger limps because he was born lame, as everyone knows. To talk of the soul of a moneylender and a beast that never had the courage of a jackal is child's talk. Boldeo was speechless, with surprise for a moment, and the headman stared. Oh, it is the jungle brat, is it? said Boldeo. If thou art so wise, better bring his hide to Kaniwara, for the government has set a hundred rupees on his life. Better still, talk not when thy elders speak. Mowgli rose to go. All the evening I have lain here listening, he called back over his shoulder, and except once or twice... Buldeo has not said one word of truth concerning the jungle, which is at his very doors. How then shall I believe the tales of ghosts and gods and goblins which he says he's seen? It is full time that boy went to herding, said the headman, while Buldeo puffed and snorted at Mowgli's impertinence. The custom of most Indian villages is for a few boys to take the cattle and buffalo out to graze in the early morning and bring them back at night. The very cattle that would trample a white man to death allow themselves to be banged and bullied and shouted at by children that hardly come up to their noses. So long as the boys keep with the herds, they're safe, for not even the tiger would charge a mob of cattle. But if they straggle to pick flowers or hunt lizards, they are sometimes carried off. Mowgli went through the village street in the dawn, sitting on the back of Rama, the great herd bull. The slatty blue buffaloes with their long backward sweeping horns and savage eyes rose out their byres one by one and followed him. And Mowgli made it very clear to the children with him that he was the master. He beat the buffaloes with long, polished bamboo and told the Kamya, one of the boys, to graze the cattle by themselves while he went on with the buffaloes and to be very careful not to stray away from the herd. 
An Indian grazing ground is all rocks and scrub and tussocks and little ravines, among which the herd scatters and disappears. The buffaloes generally keep to the pools and muddy places, where they lie wallowing or basking in the warm mud for hours. Well, Mowgli drove them on to the edge of the plain where the Wangunga came out of the jungle. And then he dropped from Rama's neck and trotted off to a bamboo clump and found Grey Brother. Ah, said Grey Brother, I have waited here for many days. What is the meaning of this cattle herding work? It is an order, said Mowgli. I'm a village herd for a while. What news of Shere Khan? He's come back to this country and has waited here a long time for thee. Now he's gone off again, for the game is scarce. But he means to kill thee. <laughs> Very good, said Mowgli. So long as he's away, thou, do thou or one of the four brothers sit on that rock so I can see thee as I come out of the village. When he comes back, wait for me in the ravine by the dak tree in the center of the plain. He need not walk into Shere Khan's mouth. Then Mowgli picked out a shady place and lay down and slept while the buffaloes gazed around him. Herding in India is one of the laziest things in the world. The cattle move and crunch and lie down and move on again, and they do not even low. They only grunt, and the buffaloes very seldom say anything, but get down into the muddy pools one after another and work their way into the mud till only their noses and staring china-blue eyes show above the surface. And then... They lie like logs. The sun makes the rocks dance in the heat, and the herd children hear one kite, never any more, whistling almost out of sight overhead. And they know that if they died, or a cow died, that kite would sweep down, and the next kite miles away would see him drop and follow, and the next, and the next, and almost before they were dead, there would be a score of hungry kites come out of nowhere. Then they sleep and wake and sleep again and weave little baskets of dried grass and put grasshoppers in them or catch two praying mantises and make them fight or string a necklace of red and black jungle nuts or watch a lizard basking on a rock or a snake hunting a frog near the wallows. When they sing long, long songs with odd native quavers at the end of them, and the day seems longer than most people's whole lives, and perhaps they make a mud castle with mud figures of men and horses and buffaloes and put reeds into the men's hands and pretend they are kings and the figures are their armies, or that they are gods to be worshipped. Then... The evening comes, and the children call, and the buffaloes lumber up out of the sticky mud with noises like gunshots going off one after the other, and they all string across the gray plain back to the twinkling village lights. Well, day after day, Mowgli would lead the buffaloes out to their wallows and Day after day, he would see Gray Brother back a mile and a half away across the plain, so he knew that Shere Khan had not come back. And day after day, he would lie on the grass, listening to the noises around him and dreaming of old days in the jungle. If Shere Khan had made a false step with his, with his lame paw, paw up in the jungles by the Wangkunga, Mowgli would have heard him in those long, still mornings. At last, a day came when he did not see Gray Brother at the signal place, and he laughed and headed the buffaloes for the ravine by the deep tree, which was all covered with golden red flowers. There sat Gray Brother, every bristle on his back lifted.
He has hidden for a month to throw thee off thy guard. He crossed the ranges last night with Tabaki. Hot foot on thy trail, said the wolf, panting. Mowgli frowned. I'm not afraid of Shere Khan, but Tabaki is very cunning. Have no fear, said Grey Brother, licking his lips a little. I met Tabaki in the dawn. Now he's telling all his wisdom to the kites. But he told me everything before I broke his back. Shere Khan's plan is to wait for thee at the village gate this evening, for thee and no one else. He is lying up now in the big dry ravine of the Wankunga. Has he eaten today, or does he hunt empty? said Mowgli, for the answer meant life and death to him. He killed at dawn a pig, and he's drunk, too. Remember, Shere Khan could never fast, even for the sake of revenge. Oh, fool! Fool! What a cub's cub it is! Eaten and drunk, too, and he thinks that I shall wait till he's slept. Now where does he lie up? If there were but ten of us, we might pull him down as he lies. These buffalo will not charge unless they wind him and I cannot speak their language. Can we get behind his track so they may smell it? He swam far down the Wankunga to cut that off, said Grey Brother. Tabaki told him that, I know. He would never have thought of it alone. Mowgli stood with his finger in his mouth, thinking. The big ravine of the Wankunga, that opens out on the plain, not... Half a mile from here, I can take the herd round through the jungle to the head of the ravine and then sweep down. But he would slink out at the foot. We must block that end, Grey Brother. Canst thou cut the herd in two for me? Not I, perhaps, but I have brought a wise helper, Grey Brother trotted off and dropped into a hole. And then there lifted up a huge gray head that Mowgli knew well, and the hot air was filled with the most desolate cry of all the jungle, the hunting howl of a wolf at midday. Akela, Akela, said Mowgli, clapping his hands. I might have known thou wouldst not forget me. We have a big work in hand. Cut the herd in two, Akela. Keep the cows and calves together, and the bulls and plow buffaloes by themselves. And that's where we will end our story tonight. And next time, we'll pick it up as they try and make their way around to surprise Shere Khan. Take him out. <laughs> Sounds terrible, doesn't it? Oh, man. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was our uh, reading from the Jungle Book. We will continue on again on our next stream, which will be on Monday night. We hope you'll join us at 10 o'clock Malaysian time. And uh, don't forget, please, patreon.com slash Sheldon. Find us over there. Check out... Not only our just regular supporter tier, but you can also sign up for reading the classics. All of our books, like what you just heard, all organized for you by chapter and book from the wonderful Wizard of Oz to Alice in Wonderland, the Velveteen Rabbit, the Little Prince. They're all there and you can get access to those exclusively through our Patreon page. Patreon.com slash Sheldon. And thank you so much for your support. I'll see you Monday night. All right, guys? Have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Until then, I'm Jay Sheldon. And I'm not wearing pants. Good night.